Hello, welcome back to my series in Factorio, in which I'm attempting to build a, my very first Mega Factory. My name is Azrael. Come along with me as we continue our adventure. The first order of business, I've noticed some biters have moved in up here to the uh, the north of my my uh, oil refinery. And that's just a little too close for comfort, so I'm going to be taking them out. It's nothing too serious today. It's just the standard turret creep, nothing, nothing fancy. Gonna get some stone out of my way. And light the night up with some fire. And poison capsules. I know that doesn't, it's not quite as romantic, but uh, it does the job. Get rid of the, a bunch of those uh, worms up there. And yes, the poison cloud does hurt me. Who would have thunk it? Alright, well, with that taken care of, I'm just gonna check on some of my oil levels. Uh, my uh, petroleum gas is completely filled up, which means that the factory is just not using nearly enough of it. And, you know, it's not very surprising considering that my factory is pretty much at a standstill at the moment. The only thing that's really going right now is research. And, uh, but I'm going to be taking care of that soon-ish. Uh, right now I'm making sure that all my trains have enough fuel in them. Yeah, it turns out everything over here is still pretty good. I'm going to go ahead over to my new coal deposit. And since this is coal, which is the fuel, I'm just going to go ahead and have it branch right out of there. Dipping into its own supply, as they might say. That should do it. Everything over here is running just fine. Because the factory is just not using a whole lot of coal right now. It's only being used for, for plastic which we went ahead and set up uh, a little while ago. Uh, but for, for today's episode, I'm going to be focusing primarily on getting up a new copper mine, because the, uh, the old copper mine that I'm currently using is running rather dry, so we need to do something about that. In order to do that, I'm going to need some wall segments, because it's going to require pushing out the defensive wall to the south of my solar grid. Uh, if you've been paying attention in the last couple of episodes, uh, uh, there is a copper deposit down there that I've had my eye on for a while. Uh, in the meantime, though, I'm trying to make room in my inventory, and I just have way too much uh, uh, of the copper plates and a little bit too much iron plates as well, which, you know, is under normal circumstances not a bad thing to have. But when your inventory is full up and you're a pack rat hoarder like I am, it really does start to become a nuisance. And you gotta get rid of something somewhere. So anyway, I just set up a few overflow boxes up there on the, uh, the the main bus. So I have a box for taking it out and a box for putting it back in. It, it's really inefficient, I know. But there's another uh, biter nest that's moved into this copper nest, or copper deposit. So I'm going to uh, get rid of these guys. I'm going to use a, a wall of fire to augment my my, uh, my my turrets. And just have them all run right into there. There's only like one major, uh, one big worm. And I just took him out with some fire. The rest of it all goes down rather easily. Alright, get this whole thing cleared up so that there are no trees in my way. And the first thing I want to do is sort of uh, 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 put out a placeholder for the train station that's going to be handling all of this. Decide to put it up to the north because it's a nice flat area up there. I'm going to put down all of the mining drills. And I only have 20 of them in my inventory right now, but that's enough to get a, a good start. And because I like to have everything... Actually, no, it's 24 in my inventory. Big difference, I know. But uh, since I like to have everything symmetrical, I'm going to put them out in, in two rows uh, with six on each side. Just like that. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and set up a bit more of this station. I realize I don't have anything in my inventory to actually craft up the train stop. So I'm just going to start putting these out wherever they're going to fit. I know that there's a, a general layout principle here. All right, and eventually, of course, those will be uh, the stack inserters, or if that's even what they're called anymore. Sometimes I forget. 
Anyway, it's not important. I'm just going to set that all up. And uh, yeah, I get everything put out here to the, to the sides. I want, I want each of these tracks to come completely out of the, uh, of the ore patch so that they're not interfering with the potential placement of any other uh, uh, mining drills that I'm going to be putting down. And just want to make sure everything gets enough power. Is you know that that's always a good thing. All right. Of course, it's not actually going to be connected up to the power grid just yet. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out how to make a uh, space for my trains to turn around. In order to do that, I need to know where the station is going to be. But since I don't have a station in my inventory nor the means to craft it, I'm going to use a rail signal as a placeholder. Because it still gives me those glorious little blo uh, boxes on the, the rails. Yeah, I just need to figure out how to make this thing get around there. And I don't have enough rails segments in my inventory. I realize that this is also probably uh, going to be right in the way. So I'm going to take that down again. Now, I want to continue this uh, defensive wall down here, and since we're so close to the actual defensive wall, I don't feel I need to completely box this thing in separately. I'm just going to uh, extend the wall down, because the, uh, the solar panel grid is also going to be extended here fairly soon. In the meantime, I also uh, have been toying around with the idea of creating a defensive perimeter that can actually feed itself ammunition so I don't have to walk around and do it manually all the time. This way uh, all I it would have to do would put uh, ammunition in one of those turrets and then it would feed the rest of it down by pulling ammunition out of that one and into the, uh, the following turrets. And then of course augment it with some laser turrets behind it it seems like it, it, in theory at least, it should be a decent plan. And it also has feeding boxes along its length so that I don't have to go to one specific spot and put uh, ammunition in it. I can just kind of go to wherever there is a box and plop down a couple of stacks and it will feed into the system. I don't know. We'll see if this system is viable and if not, make changes as necessary. It, it's just all experimental at the moment. So in the meantime, I'm going. Uh, I, I know I put all these these uh, iron plates down in here to be fed back into the system, and then I just need to pick them right back up again. But uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to first of all let my bots fix up some of these turrets along the wall. They've been taking a, a fair bit of damage. I'm going to need some more repair packs, and then I'm going to pick up some sort of more solar panels and accumulators. And while, uh, while I'm up here, I'm going to get some more supplies to make more uh, rail segments. And I don't have enough steel, so I've got to go back up here and get some more of that. Alright, there we go. And it's probably still not going to be enough, because rail segments just run out so quickly. Alright, but in the meantime, I can take out this uh, inner wall. And my inventory is full again, so I'll craft up some more rail segments. You can never have enough of them. And that'll make enough room in there. Alright, get all that out of the way. I'm going to plunk down some more arrays. There we go. And just a few more. I need some more... Uh, uh, substations in my inventory. One thing that I always forget about when I'm placing down these arrays. Alright. Those bots just all go to work like that. Like little troopers they are. Alright. That has of course gotten us rather close to the actual uh, uh, copper depot down here. So I may have to get a little creative with how to make this uh, this turnaround loop I'm going to see if I can fit it up this way. Nope, not quite. 
it looks like eventually I'm I'm just gonna have to take this down and move it a little bit that's all right you know just a few minutes of work wasted nothing serious and I'm starting to, to run a little low on my my research everything that I have now is going to start taking stupid amounts of, uh, of science packs which is fine for everything except for the alien artifacts that are required for the purple science pack uh, simply because that means I have to go out and kick a whole bunch of fighter butt it, it, not something I'm against doing of course I mean that that's just a, a, a perk of the job really but it's uh, it, it is something I'll have to kind of dedicate an episode or two uh, towards uh, especially since the the biters are probably on the cusp of of uh, the uh, final evolution to where they start spawning behemoths, and that can always become a hairy prospect for uh, for going out and farming the alien artifacts. Uh, before I do that, I would ideally like to get the final power armor suit going, and that will require some uh, uh, module production. Which, you know, is going to have to happen eventually anyway. And especially now that I've gotten uh, my copper, or will be getting the copper supply uh, figured out, there's really no reason not to do that. So probably here in the next episode or two, we're going to be focusing on getting up a, uh, a module production facility. Because I, I've talked about it so many times in the past. It's about time I make good on that. All right, down here, just uh, putting up a few extra bits on the southern portion of my solar array. And it's time to put in the T-junction that will be feeding this copper uh, mine. And uh, a couple of things that are in my way there. Rather than try to figure out what was missing, just plop down the blueprint one more time. All right, I'm going to let my construction bots put in the uh, the last bit of the rail segment here. And put down some lights so you can see what I'm doing. Never a bad thing. All right, and then I also realized that uh, this new line of the defensive perimeter that I put up is going to interfere with that train line if, you know, in the event that I ever have to push it even farther south. And, you know, you never really know. There's, there's going to be tons of... of or pockets all around the place and uh, I'm just trying to set up my my defense my new self-feeding defensive line and it, I realized I just did not give myself enough room around here so for now I'm just gonna do it the old-fashioned way where I manually put in all the uh, the ammunition for the gun turrets all right that should do it get some more research out of the way I'm going to try to figure out what uh, what is going to require the fewest amount of science pack four, the the purple ones, because I know that I am running a bit low on that. But uh, yeah, it's it's not a big issue at the moment. All right, just going to lead the uh, the the power substations down across my my defensive perimeter. All right, build in that corner. I know this is all kind of boring and, and stuff that we've seen about a hundred times, so there's really not a whole lot that I can narrate to add insight to it. There's a, already his first fighter attack, and it uh, defended against that rather nicely. So now it's just a matter of extending this around. I wanted to encompass the entire... Uh, eventual solar uh, array and just get the uh, the ammunition all worked out there all right okay and gonna I need to head back up into the factory one more time uh, first, I'm going to try to figure out where I can put this, uh, the, uh, how I can connect this back up to the, the, the train system. I, I don't want it to continue uh, north and interfere with the, uh, the drop-off areas. 
for the uh, the smelting lines because that area is already a high enough traffic area get the stone out of my way I, it, I'm just gonna extend it out to the west here outside of the defensive perimeter and connect up with the uh, the line that I created for the uh, the coal plant and uh, once again I'm out of rail segments so now I have to head it back up into the factory I'm gonna get some more steel and I just I just use way too much of this this steel for you know three stacks to be anywhere near sufficient craft up some more substations I need more steel all right and I'm gonna head back over here to my stone uh, production area which is also starting to run dry I'm gonna have to go out and scout out a new uh, stone mine because as nice as that one has been it is almost empty and uh, there just doesn't seem to be a whole lot of stone on this map any, really any map that I've ever played there's just never seems to be enough stone all right I'm gonna pick up some of these stack inserters while I'm up here and then head back down to the copper mine actually I'm gonna check something out over here first Oh yes, this is where I want to have it extend down, and I'm not really sure what kind of intersection I'm, I should have. I'm going to see if I can double up my T-junction, and uh, you know if, if that will work, or if I'm going to have to design a, a new uh, uh, junction to work like this. Since there's not a whole lot of traffic over here, I don't imagine that's going to be a, a, a major problem. So... We'll just see how that goes, and uh, of course, if the if need arises, we'll just fix it up some more. All right, I need to craft up some more uh, stuff in my inventory to finish up this T junction down here, where it's going to eventually connect up to the cop the new copper mine. Get that connected over, and bring up the second uh, lane up there, and I I don't have enough to finish that last little bit. So once again, heading back over here into the factory, looks like I'm going to need even more steel, and I'm going to uh, repurpose the filter on that one to give me uh, double the number of stacks, and sim simply because I'm tired of walking back and forth, I'm just going to build up my, my locomotive and have that head out here for me. Now, there we go and then back down into the copper mine. Now it's been a while since I've driven a train manually so I've kind of forgotten the controls here. Uh, there we go. And into the roundabout. Really rather confusing area to try to drive manually. It, what, <laughs> I am not good at this. Let's just agree to that. Alright. Put in the actual station. Rename it. Copper Mine Zero Two. All right, let's get this thing over. It looks like everything is uh, uh, full up, so it just should just start loading right away. I'm going to set up all the conditions and where to go. Yeah, pretty much the same as before. All right, that should be all right. Upgrade everything to the stack inserters. And that should be good. Let's just go ahead and go. And off it goes. There we go. And can I say go a few more times? All right. Now I'm going to finish up this defensive wall because we are starting to run out of time. I just want to make sure to get this completed. Yeah, there we go. Get my, my defensive perimeter blueprint going. All right. There we go. Have it meet up down there in that corner. Perfect. I'm going to reposition some of these just to make sure that they are uh, uh, matching up with everything. Put some lights, but that light doesn't have any power because that substation is not connected. Now it is. There we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. Yay! Alright, get all these connected back up. And then I get up here and get everything connected into the, uh, the power grid, but then I realize 
this is the southern end of this. I need to get some of these out of the way. This one from here north. And I'll just have it uh, feed along the side instead. There we go. And that is all the time we have for today. So thank you very much for watching. My name is Azrael. Never stop building.